Hi. We are. <laughs> I'll tell you it's a lot easier being down there than it is up here. Why? I don't know. I'm nervous. Do you feel on the spot? A little bit. Are you worried about what they'll think? I don't think so. Are you afraid of us? No. Are you sort of clear about what you want to talk about? Yeah. You like co-creating? Yes. Then those are just old beliefs that don't apply right now, aren't they? Yeah, that's a... Yes. <laughs> I want to talk about the notion of when people say, and I, I've heard this my whole life, so it's probably a belief, but I, I, I still incorporate it in my ex daily experience of, well, if this job, I didn't get this job, or I didn't get this house that I want to move into, that it wasn't, quote unquote, it wasn't meant to be, and that there is something bigger and better coming. We would say it in different words. We would say, I didn't rendezvous with it. I didn't rendezvous with it. And it could be for these reasons. Either it wasn't up to speed with my desire, or I wasn't up to speed with my desire. Can you hear the difference? It wasn't meant to be. That doesn't make any sense because there's no one minting things in the being outside of you. So it either means that it doesn't match what my vortex version is, or I'm not matching what my vortex version is. Now, we agree with you. You say these things and you hear these things, but now you are different because now you've had several hours together where you've been steeped in a new understanding of the way life is coming to you. And so if you're approaching anything that you've wondered about before from this new perspective of, well, I'm tending to my point of attraction. And what is my point of attraction right now? Am I under the influence of my inner being? Because if I am, then that house is not up to speed with who I am. If I'm up to speed with who I am, then I'm up to speed with what's in my vortex. So I'm up to speed. So my point of attraction is such that what I really want will come to me. And if that doesn't come, then it isn't what I really want. Did you hear that? So can you hear how helpful it would be in all of these situations of wondering? Can you hear how helpful it would be to be pretty good at acknowledging what influence am I under right now? Am I under the influence of source or am I under the influence of not liking where I live? Am I under the influence of understanding my ability to be or do or have anything I want? Or am I under the influence of wanting to prove my worthiness in some way? As you play with this on big and small subjects on a variety of different topics, you'll get really good at knowing what influence you're under. Have you ever been in a situation where you said about the room full of people or about a particular person that you are interacting with, that person brings the best out in me. I'm more lively. I'm more clever. I'm more fun. I'm less inhibited. I feel better when I'm with that. Well, that's what it feels like to be under the influence of source. I'm just at my best. I feel security, not insecurity, or I feel confidence, not lack of confidence. I feel exhilarated, not lethargic, or I feel stable, not unstable. You see? And so as you just practice moment by moment, what influence am I under? What influence am I under? Then it's easy for you to know, well, that house just isn't the right house. As I go through this process and we'll, we'll use the house example, if I see something that I like, that's just a representation, but I know a representation I mean, of what representation of what I want, but it may be just, it, I can't feel it. So it's not really a direction I should go. Does that make sense? Like, you're introducing some really wonderful things to this conversation. So this is the way we would approach it if we were standing in your physical shoes. First, if it isn't something that is really ringing your bells, we wouldn't move in the direction of it. We'd just call it data collecting. But you also want to focus, as we've been talking all this week, on being in a bell ringable position. If you're not in a position where you can hear your bells ringing, then you're not going to hear your bells ringing. And so sometimes bells are ringing and you don't hear it. And sometimes the wrong bells are ringing, so to speak. So it's necessary to know how you feel. And so this is how we would approach it. That was a little hard to hear. We're going to make it clear for you. A nice way to approach life is to say, 
I'm going to make a decision and I'm going to line up with the decision because there are so many options that would be lovely but in human experience I want to find the very best option and I'm afraid if I pick an option that's not the very best option then I will prevent myself from having the very best option what if I pick something lesser than what I really want and if we were standing in your physical shoes that's not the way we would approach it if we've practiced knowing what it feels like for bells to ring and our bells are ringing a little bit we would make a decision to line up with that because you can be in a position later where something else and something else and something else there's nothing that is the end of your ability to attract and so there's a sort of limitation that you're imposing unnecessarily that goes something like I've got to make the right decision because you really can't make the wrong decision because any decision that you make if you decide to line up with it you're gonna have inner being help and since you never get it done then is there any problem with it just getting better and 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 better do you ever stand back and regret having been four? Oh, I'm embarrassed that I was four I didn't know very much then <laughs> or five not much more than either enjoy your evolution through your attraction through your steady never-ending attraction